Uh, our next uh, speaker will be Johnson Chong. Mr. Johnson Chong is the Executive Director of Malaysia LCMS Syndrome Bahat. Today's his topic will be, will be challenges and opportunities for schools to beat the competitive in the new norms. So um, to you, Johnson. Hello, everyone. My name is Johnson Chong, and I am the Executive Director of Malaysia LCMS a 360 education consultancy. Let me share my screen now. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead for schools operating in a new normal and beyond. As we have very limited time, let me jump straight into it. We're now living in a digital world, a world where we live simultaneously in both the physical and digital worlds where a new way of doing things is needed. Many people believe that with the COVID-19 situation, all schools will have experienced a dramatic reduction in enrollment numbers over the last year or so. Well, that is not the case. An international school report released earlier this year indicates that 59% of admission staff said student enrollment for 2020-2021 actually increased due to COVID-19. And the vast majority said it's because of the quality of their online or distance learning provision. Indeed, an admissions leader was reported as saying, the poor execution of online learning by other schools has generated interest in our service offering. Just imagine, if the quality of online learning provision alone could make so much difference, how much would your school student enrollment improve if that online learning provision was coupled with excellent customer service. In this new world, it is increasingly important that all school teachers, leaders, and other staff realize that each one of them, irrespective of their primary function, has an important sub-responsibility to market the school. These days, in addition to students attending lessons online, more often than not, parents are also interacting with the school digitally. Indeed, a very recent Fortune magazine article said 77 million American students, their parents, and millions of teachers and administrators now interact via technology for not only learning, but also enrollment and attendance, student support, finance, counseling, and career services, and advancement. Hundreds of billions of interactions are now occurring online while maintaining some level of personalization to maintain efficacy and foster a sense of belonging. What that means is that parents can now transfer their child to another school with minimal hassle, free of charge, all within a few clicks away, within minutes. Hence, every customer's experience of your school, both online and offline, are critical. Therefore, all staff and all facilities in the digital world must support an excellent customer experience at every step of the way. For a start, classrooms must be able to accommodate students attending lessons physically as well as digitally, and teachers must be able to teach digitally, that is, both offline and online students at the same time. So your school must have hybrid classrooms if you wish to stay ahead. At the same time, excellent customer experience also means that not only must the relevant information be easy to find and presented clearly online, your staff must also be ready, willing, and able to respond quickly and appropriately to any inquiry or feedback received. Thus, all school staff, not just the marketing, sales, and customer service personnel need to be trained to go the extra mile for customers. In addition, your school's online structures and processes must also be designed and built accordingly because even the most enthusiastic and helpful staff cannot delight customers if the system itself is built for the school's convenience instead of the customers. Yes. We are now definitely living in highly uncertain times, but that also means almost anything is possible. A change in the mindset, 
coupled with the right tool, could very well mean taking down the Goliath that you could not beat before. Everywhere we look these days, there is an abundance of information and new technologies are blooming all over the place. A combination of COVID-19 realities, market forces, and technological progress is fueling unprecedented levels of change, making every step we take a step on shifting sands. So, regardless of whether your school has been around for a very long time or brand new, a startup mentality is needed. That is, every school needs to learn, iterate, and reiterate quickly. In this scenario, the ability to adapt by unlearning years of habits and relearning new ways of thinking and doing things is critical. As Elvin Toffler said, the illiterates of the 21st century are not those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, relearn, and unlearn. In this context, the main way to unlearn and relearn is, of course, through experience. But there's another good way to do that by practicing a so-called 21st century skill, collaboration. Oftentimes, collaborating with others, exchanging information and ideas and working together leads to new insights and opportunities. Collaboration also enables us to leverage on the strength of partner organizations, regardless of whether they are educational or non-educational, which quite often produces unexpected payoffs, both in terms of education outcomes, as well as enrollment results. But let's come back to our most important duty, educating children so that they can live fulfilling lives and play meaningful roles in society in an uncertain future. What we have is not a lack of knowledge. Even before COVID-19, teachers have known that education is not about what students know, but what they can do with what they know. Now, increasingly, students have to know more than just how to ace exams and acquire a university degree. These days, some top tech employers are not even looking for graduates to fill an increasing number of highly paid jobs. They just want candidates with the right skill sets. Indeed, these employers cannot wait three years for universities to complete educating their future employees because what the graduate learned in the first year will most likely be obsolete already. However, it is also not just about skills and abilities. As we all know, technology, specifically artificial intelligence, will take over a significant number of jobs, including white collar jobs that are traditionally done by professionals. Interestingly, I was speaking with someone in America during an online unconference yesterday, and he said that only two types of human skills will ensure our place in the digital high tech world. The ability to care and the ability to create. And I think that's true. And what that means for us as educators is that apart from imparting knowledge and developing skills, education must also increase the awareness or power of perception of students so that they can see that we are all connected with one another and everything else in the world. This ability to see is the seed of compassion and creativity. Therefore, education for the future must also enable students to see and work on their own paradigms, to future-proof children today so they can navigate tomorrow successfully. Teachers not only need technological resources and the know-how of transferring knowledge and developing skills, they also need the see-how and the be-how to raise the perception ability of students today so that they can shift their own paradigms. The invisible narratives we believe and the values we have unconsciously adopted keep us in the old paradigm. Hence, education must also cultivate the courage to challenge and change those narratives. In other words, education for the future must also instill intrinsic human values that support positive paradigm shifts. 
as you will have no doubt seen over the last couple of days of this conference, there exists an abundance of tech solutions for education. The necessary hardware and the software are already available. But the question remains whether you and your team can make the necessary paradigm shift and transform your school so that you can, in turn, teach your students how to shift paradigms. I certainly hope you can, because I know that all of us desperately need comprehensive, integrated, coherent and context sensitive schools that serve all stakeholders, students, teachers, parents, leaders, administrators, and everyone else within the greater school community so that we can educate our future digital leaders together. In any case, we're most happy to help if you need any assistance because we would love to work with you to forge a better, more sustainable digital world together. Thank you. Thank you, Johnson, um, for the um, inspirational speech. Okay, I'll pass uh, the question news to uh, Rajita. Uh, Hi, Johnson. Ida. Thank you, David. Hi, Ida. Uh, nice to see you again. Um, Johnson, I've picked up one. Um, actually, the, there's about two questions that I've actually picked up um, right. from our audiences. Yeah. So the first one says, uh, John um, Chong, firstly, thanks for your interesting talk. And then the, it says that they have received. Um, a certain kind of feedback from students and the feedback was that um, they think technology has made teachers lazy. So the question is, um, in your opinion, uh, are the students right? Do you think technology makes teachers lazy? Um, students, you know? <laughs> okay, no, definitely not. I'm very, very clear on this. Um, edu the education technology is just a tool for teachers, right? If the teachers are lazy to begin with, they will still be lazy. If they're hardworking to begin with, they'll be hardworking. In fact, I find that a lot of teachers who discover the power of education technology, they actually use it to leverage it so that they can teach even better. This is an example like uh, Chikgu Noraini was talking about learning a language just now because students are at different levels of uh, language proficiency. Some students may need more help, but now today with this kind of technology, they can assign homework where students can do it on their own and catch up other, as opposed to before, if it's just pen on paper, they wouldn't be able to, to do that. So I think uh, on the contrary, I think it helps teachers to be even more hardworking if they know that technology helps them you know, become better teachers. Great, that's really good to know. Um, and I think I agree with you. Um, good teachers will always be good teachers regardless of what it is. Okay, um, our second question, it says, Hi, I am an administrator or leader in an international school based in Malaysia. And our enrollment numbers have been falling since the COVID pandemic. Um, I am intrigued by what you said during your presentation about improving student enrollment numbers. What can we do to improve student enrollment at our school? What would your suggestions be? Okay. Um, first of all, it's difficult to, to say unless I really know the context. So there needs to be a bit of fact finding. But I guess at this point, what I can really say is this. Um, there is no very 
very seldom do you find that there's only one reason for something happening. So the cause for the enrollment dropping, I would suspect, is not just because of one thing. It could be a combination of things. So for me, the point here is we've got to think in terms of systems. We've not only got to look at the administrative system, whether it's the marketing or the admissions people, but also at the um, quality of education in this particular case, online education, right? So um, that's one system. But the other is, now this is might be a bit challenging for, for some, but it's also important to look at the school overall sits or is embedded in a larger system within society. And nowadays with, with you know, borderless education, online education, we've also got to look at the school itself within a broad global education system. Where do we fit in and what can we deliver or provide better than anyone else? And that should, you know, give the leaders some clues as to what they can do to reverse the trend of uh, dropping enrollment. Okay, great. That's really some sound advice. So I hope um, that um, our uh, person who asked the question um, got some tips from there. So um, I think that's uh, the time that we have at the moment, Johnson, for, for questions and all that. So once again, thank you very okay. much. Okay, 